And as we barrel toward a uh, likely rematch of the 2020 election, one candidate continues to have a hold over white rural voters. But it's not Joe Biden, seen here as a boy on the right side of your screen who went to public school, is the son of a used car salesman, and was born to a middle-class family in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Instead, it is Trump here on the left side, a private school educated son of a New York City real estate tycoon who became a millionaire at eight years old and didn't have to serve because he claimed he had bone spurs in his little feet. So why is it that Trump appeals so much to a group he couldn't be more different from? Joining us now, professor of political science at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, Tom Schaller, and journalist and opinion writer Paul Waldman. Their new book, Out Tomorrow, is entitled White Rural Rage, the Threat to American Democracy. And Tom, we'll start with you. Uh, why are white rural voters a threat to democracy at this point? You would think, as we pointed out, looking at Joe Biden's background and Donald Trump's, that, that the opposite would be true. I mean, we lay out the fourfold interconnected threat that white rural voters pose to the country. First of all, and we show 30 polls and national studies to demonstrate this, so we provide the receipts in Chapter 6. They're the most racist, xenophobic, anti-immigrant, anti-gay geodemographic group in the country. Second, they're the most conspiracist group. QAnon support and subscribers, election denialism, COVID denialism and scientific skepticism, Obama birtherism. Third, anti-democratic sentiments. They don't believe in an independent press, free speech. They're most likely to say the president should be able to act unilaterally without any checks from Congress or the courts or the bureaucracy. They're also the most strongly white nationalist and white Christian nationalist. And fourth, they are most likely to excuse or justify violence as an acceptable alternative to peaceful public discourse. So you mentioned a lot of negative factors yeah. about, about this, this demographic. Um, Tom, what else do they have in common? Uh, with, well, you know, I think that the, what, what really matters I mean, at this point in time. What makes them vulnerable? Oh, well, a lot of that has to do with, uh, as a starting point, the problems that rural America has, which are very real and very profound. Mm -hmm. um, they have uh, the more uh, problematic uh, education systems. They have right. poor infrastructure. They've had a, a lack of economic opportunity. We've seen a lot of manufacturing jobs leave from rural areas. And mm -hmm. that kind of left them open to someone like Donald Trump who would come along and tell them something that was true, that there is a system that has not served them well. Mm -hmm. And he said... They're pissed off. They are pissed off, and they have some reason to be mm -hmm. with both parties. Um, the, the trouble is that what Donald Trump uh, gave them was not something that was actually going to fix those problems, but was just a, a, a kind of a, a way to channel their rage and anger. And, you know, we've been told for so long, especially Democrats have been told, that in order to get rural voters, to get them to listen to you, you have to go there, you have to really empathize right. with them, you have to show them that you understand their lives, you have to, you know, put on a Carhartt jacket and go right, down to somebody's right. farm. Have a and, beer. And yeah, maybe yeah. milk a cow. Yes. <laughs> and it yes. turned out that none of that was true. No. When Donald Trump came along, he didn't do any of that stuff. He was just a conduit for their rage, their anger, their resentment. And that turned out to be what they wanted. And it wasn't really about the material uh, conditions of their lives, because he right. didn't improve their lives. But he got more support in rural areas in 2020 than he had in 2016, despite the fact that none of their problems had gotten any better under him. All that he gave them was a way to essentially give a big middle finger to yeah. Democrats, to people who live in cities, and to the rest of the country. Isn't he more than a conduit to their rage? Isn't he also... Um, a symbol of their aspirations to an extent? They are, but what are their aspirations? As we to write be the rich. book, uh, I guess, but they're not getting there, right? Poverty is soaring in between 20. And why aren't they seeing that? I think this is the disconnect, right? They'd rather channel their rage. I think what a lot uh, of rural white Americans have decided is that their economic fortunes are decided by globalization and, frankly, late-stage capitalism, which is eating up all the mom-and-pop stores and taking away, you know, the uh, the extractive industries and coal and farming and so forth. So they might as well vote on their cultural issues. They might as well vote on God's God, gun, and religion because they feel like neither party is going to deliver any material benefit. They're not going to reverse the closure of rural pharmacies and rural hospitals and rural health care treatment facilities, which are now disappearing, not because of communism and not because of socialism, but because of capitalism, right? Rural pharmacies and hospitals are closing because they're not money makers, and unless they're part of a regional chain, they're disappearing. So Trump comes in and says, 
let's just hate on cities, let's yeah. just hate on minorities, let's hate on immigrants, and at least they can deliver on that. And so they're not even voting in their material interests anymore, and that's causing the further decay and decline of rural communities. All right. Uh, Reverend Al Guys has a question for you. Rev? Tom, Tom wouldn't you also say that uh, it is in the interest of those like Donald Trump to put the blame on people who are likely to be going through the same kinds of challenges in maybe a different part of the country, like blacks, like browns, like migrants. And he channels this rage that they rightfully have in rural areas toward the wrong people. And those that could do something about it escape without having to make change because if those rural whites and blacks and migrants and browns came together, they could really force real change. Isn't it a diversion uh, to the wrong people based on their inherent racism and xenophobia? Absolutely, Reverend Allen. As you probably know, 24% of rural America is non-white now. And we have had right. eight years since Trump came down the escalator in June 2015 of focusing on rural whites, the heartland flyover people, and what their economic anxieties are. But with the exception of two things that we've, we can find, opioid deaths and gun deaths, on every other measure in rural America, rural Latinos, rural African Americans, and yeah. rural Native Americans, the most rural population in America, are doing worse. And nobody cares about their economic anxieties. And one of the things we argue for, and Paul R argues eloquently in our concluding chapter, is that if rural America really wants to revive itself, they need to build a pan-racial, white, non-white coalition in rural America. But there doesn't seem to be any effort whatsoever among white rural Americans to do that. Wow. Now, we have a whole chapter about non-white rural Americans, because they're a population that totally gets ignored. You know, we spent uh, a couple of years after Donald Trump got elected, you know, journalists went to every single diner in middle America to try to talk to red-hatted MAGA right. folks about what, what concerned them, what they were mad about. Nobody went to the rural African Americans, rural right. Latinos, rural Native Americans to find out what's mad, what they're mad about. And they have every reason to be mad, but you know what they're not doing? They're not overrunning the Capitol. They're not going down to their state capital car just, carrying AR-15s. It's so confusing they have, to me. And, and nobody <laughs> treats them the way we do right rural Americans as though yeah. they, we have a moral obligation to know what they're angry about and to cater to them. So, but, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, well, the book is White Rural Rage. You can find out more in it. The Threat to American Democracy. Authors Tom Schaller and Paul Waldman. Thank you both very much. We really appreciate it.